that's fine. Um, okay, so um, to the Emerson Way uh, hearing, is there a presentation? Great. Uh, Randy Kratowski and Carolyn Burgess. And, and we are here this evening requesting that the subdivision approval that was granted February 12, 2012 be um, for the current subdivision Emerson Way be amended to remove the condition that the homeowners can never request that the city accept Emerson Way as a public way. Please note that your actions tonight are to just approve that the amendment be removed and not and it is not an approval or an endorsement that the street be accepted. A favorable vote by the board approving the amendment merely allows the homeowners association to petition the city to accept the way. That is, it opens the door for that opportunity. We have a brief presentation, which will explain why having the right to petition the city and hopefully uh, ultimately being successful in getting the road accepted is vitally important to the homeowners which include factors relating to safety, economics, and fair treatment as a resident of Northampton. First, a little background on the subdivision. If we put up the slide, we can show where it's located. Oh, sorry. Okay, no. There we go. Yeah, just this arrow key. Okay. So the arrow. Okay. So here we are. This is showing um, where Emerson Way is a home to over 140 residents, including 30 children under the age of 14. The subdivision consists of 56 lots, and all but one are approved upon with single family residences. The development on this property was first designed as a much denser condominium project back in 2002. By, uh, this was proposed by creative developers and was known as the Oaks. The condition prohibiting the road way to be um, accepted as a public way uh, first appeared in that decision for that project. And notes in the city files indicate that the reason for that was related to budgetary constraints uh, uh, at that time. As the project design and the owners changed over the years to become the single family subdivision it is today and approved in, finally in 2012, the condition remained which would not have been a concern to the developers who no, are no longer around and who would not be impacted by it and whose only goal was to get the subdivision approved. So here we are today with the homeowner's hands tied to even get the opportunity to try to get the road accepted. And we hope you will allow the residents that opportunity. I would like to now call up Brandy Krutowski who will address why maintaining Emerson Way as a private way is such a concern to all of the residents. Actually, if Carol wants to go first. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. How do I go? The state has name and none of those, please. For the subdivision history? No, you can go to safety. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. All right. But, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Caroline Burgess, uh, I live at 108 Emerson Way. I've lived on Emerson Way um, since 2015. I have two kids, eight and 10, that go to Ryan Road School. And there's a couple, and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, there's a couple of reasons why the amendment is necessary. And I'm going to start with safety, which is kind of near and dear to my heart as a parent of young kids. Um, <clears throat> so as we mentioned, there's around 30 children under the age of 14 at Emerson Way. There's also 35 dogs. Um, and I think there's some kids um, on the way. So Emerson Way is really used a lot by the neighborhood. I'm actually going to just scroll here to give you an idea if you look at like the pictures like so we do a lot of different events and Halloween and it's become a destination for Halloween we do like a 
pride parade and just a lot of different things that bring kids in a neighborhood together. Um, we have the bus stop, the, the bus stop there, um, you know, people walking, people from around the community as well, Burt's Pit, come to walk around the neighborhood because we have a sidewalk, which is really nice. Um, I mentioned the school bus. We also have a special needs van that picks up um, a kid to take them to school. The We know that in the future, and what we hope is that um, Merson Way will become part of the Northampton, sorry, let me just move this, um, one trail, which will connect the bike trails between Ice Pond Drive and Florence Road. Um, and so there, you know, needless to say, there's a lot of activity going around in this neighborhood. Um, I mentioned I moved to Emerson Way in 2015 and I went back through emails. I've sent seven emails from the time that I moved to the HOA, to different residents, to companies, um, like contractors building houses in the area to say, hey, we have a speeding problem. There's all these really young kids and there's no way for us to really enforce the speed limit. So we've done a number of things. We have a crosswalk, we have a speed limit sign, but at the end of the day, we're a private road. So there's really very little that we can do. Um, and, you know, there's, yeah, there's only so much we can do. So to me, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, we hope that you'll consider this. All right. Thank you. Um, my name is Randy Kratowski. I live at 171 Emerson Way. Um, I'm currently the president of the HOA. I know a couple of you um, from Zoom. I actually haven't met anybody in person for several years. Um, yeah, and, and as, yeah, let me move forward. Um, you know, as both Ellen and, and Carolyn mentioned, I, I think the biggest surprise for us and, and what kind of triggered us acting on this, we've been talking about this for quite some time, and I'll, I'll talk as to why now, but the, the biggest surprise to us was the fact that we, everybody, everybody that I've talked to, you know, a lot of people didn't realize what was in the documents. A lot of people um, thought it was going to be easy to change based on realtor advice and, and builder advice. Um, the big surprise for us is when we asked for some help around, can you do a traffic assessment of our neighborhood? And, and the police actually came out and installed the radar sign and it came down the next day um, when they realized we were a private way. And uh, what we hadn't realized and what nobody on our street realized that there's just, we can't enforce as an HOA um, anything on people coming on the street, really. I mean, we don't have picketing ability. We don't have the ability to go knock on the door and say you're speeding. Um, we can enforce you know, rules and regulations on members of the HOA um, because they all signed an agreement, they're all members. Um, we can impose financial penalty, penalties. And the reality is we don't have a problem with, with residents anymore. I mean, you know, the, the ones that had teenage kids or, or have talked to their kids and they're slowing down. What we can't do is enforce any kind of public way ordinances or traffic laws on our street at all, nor can the city, nor can the police. And, then, and that's really what kind of got us going. And, and I just, ask you to think about it another way. If, if on your street, if there was a movement to remove the city's ability to enforce um, traffic laws and city ordinances um, on your street, you know, one, I, I doubt the city would ever support that. They would be fighting tooth and nail to prevent that from happening. Uh, um, but, but think about it from our perspective, it's where we are. And this is why we're asking you not to approve the taking of the street, because that's, that's something for later, but to allow us to have a discussion with the city um, and, oops, you know, there, there's arguments. And so the discussion around the city or the, or our street, of course, there's cost. We pay about a 5% premium um, on our property taxes that are paid to care for the road and the street. And that's everything from setting aside reserves for the future repaving of the street, but it's also snow plowing and things like that. And I'm, I'm sure our costs are higher than the city's because we're 50 houses with a 0.7 mile road. And so we get a decent price, but probably not the best price. Um, and so cost is, is an issue we, that we think uh, would like to be taken into account, especially since, like I say, it's, it's essentially a public way in all respects, except for the maintenance and, and paying for it. And the fact you can't enforce any traffic laws on it. Um, the condition is not uniformly applied. Now, we spent an inordinate amount of time trying to research what was at the root of this. And, and uh, if anybody's tried to research back to the early 2000s, um, there's a lot of records, um, some are missing. Um, but, you know, the microfiche, the planning and sustainability files, the land records, um, what we found was, other than ourselves, and then more recently Higgins 
way, there's no single family subdivisions that aren't condo associations or um, co-housing that have this particular restriction. And, and for us, we really couldn't figure out why. And we talked to Carolyn and she mentioned water was a concern at the time. Um, we didn't understand what that concern was, um, but it was a concern and talked to, of course, Wayne. I actually met with George Kohut for coffee a couple of years ago and we we're just getting started because his signature's on the, the document back then. He could not remember um, why it was put there. Anyway, so we've done a lot of research and, and it's really not uniformly applied. And we'd love to know sort of the underlying reason and the potential causes, and then they have the ability to actually address those causes um, if there's anything that we could do as, as, as residents. Um, and it, like I say, you know, one of the things we thought is it might have been because at one point in time, Emerson Way was a condo association or condominium complex. That was the original proposal, um, which got uh, came before the planning board in 2002 and then got changed. And we we were wondering whether that particular prohibition was a hangover, like I say, and, and we didn't we didn't know. Um, so before um, we get into questions, I figured I'd. I'd And ask and answer a few, you know, so advising that we can't. Um, and then the other thing is the sub, the developer just turned over the subdivision in uh, July of 2022. last year. So it's ring to this. Yes and no. I think everybody, or not everybody, um, many people saw that clause in, in the uh, covenants. Um, of course, when you're buying a house and signing 600 pages of paper, you're not necessarily paying attention to all details. And, and like I say, the advice we were getting from realtors and, and builders was was probably not the best. Um, they thought it would be not much of an issue. Um, like I say, but but even those of us who took a hard look at it never realized the implications that uh, um, we don't have any record of safety incidents. We bring safety. Well, we've had a car side swiped. It wasn't reported to the police. We've had some close calls. Um, our desire, excuse me, allergies are drying me out. Our desire is to act before there's an incident. I mean, we would rather not have any safety incidents on our street. And our view is, is by moving forward down this path and, and actually engaging in discussions with the city, whether there is an alternative by which the street could be accepted, um, maybe we could avoid future um, accidents. Um, we're a private road. You know, I think Carolyn put in her staff notes that we could put as many traffic calming measures as, as we can, which we have. We have a radar sign. We have a speed limit. When we, we have a crosswalk sign that it's been destroyed three times so far. Um, the, the current one's metal, so if it gets destroyed, it might cause a little damage to whoever's destroying it. Um, so we're doing what we can. Um, we, we took a look at speed bumps. It's, it's probably not uh, a great solution. And, and the reality is, is if you look at traffic, um, you know, the speed bumps, everybody slows down briefly for the speed bump and then speeds up who's going to speed. Um, you know, those people who are intending to obey the laws or obey the speed limits, we'll see what we put in front of them as they come into the neighborhood and they'll, oh yeah, right, I'm, I'm going too fast. The ones that intend to speed won't be slowed by anything. Um, although a brief personal story, you know, a short discussion with a police officer has an amazing impact. Um, I was by the traffic circle and it was all blocked up. So I turned left to get around on, the, on Pleasant Street and uh, didn't come to a full stop when I turned right onto Pleasant Street. And, and you know, and normally, I'm pretty good about it, but not always. And uh, unfortunately, turned right in front of a police officer who pulled me over and gave me a warning, thankfully. Um, but wow, did I pay attention to that for the next uh, several months. And then the last one, the water booster system and how the system's unique to um, the subdivision. I think that, you know, you know, Leeds has a water booster pump, although it's a, it's a city property. Um, I think our subdivision does have some unique things. And, and like I say, this should come up when we are petitioning the city to look at the infrastructure and, and what they'd be willing to take and what agreements we would have to be in, put in place so that they had confidence that they wouldn't have any problems. Um, but to this point, we've not been able to have those discussions since we're prohibited um, from petitioning the city, we can't really engage meaningfully with the city. We've, we've went and chatted with Carolyn, we've chatted with Wayne previously, um, approaching both directors of, of planning and sustainability, but in, you know, they point to the agreement and there's nothing more that we can do. So, so what we're asking, I just want to clarify or make sure that it's very clear, removing that prohibition so that we can engage in these discussions that may result in the city taking some of our assets or some, maybe not. Um, but we'd like to engage in that discussion. Thank you.
there are questions or comments from the board at this point or anything, Carolyn, you'd like to add now before we open it up for public comment? Um, well, yeah, I mean, clarification. Um, the question is um, about why this was um, required to be a private way. The, the, um, some of the folks in the back, I hate to interrupt, some of the folks in the back can hear that. I mean, they there's, yeah. I I mean, all we can do. I I pulled this closer, so it work. Um, the subdivision um pro proposed back in early two thousands um had a number of requests for waivers from the subdivision regulations that uh, related to the technical details of how the subdivision would function. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the water pressure issues and the water uh, ability for the Department of Public Works to provide adequate pressure because throughout the city, there's sort of the standard, it's uh, 325 feet um, beyond which uh, mean sea level beyond which water pressures can't be guaranteed. That was an issue right away when this applicant came forward. The applicant, um, there were a number of other um, waivers requested, length of the of a cul-de-sac, which requires then connectivity to other neighborhoods to minimize traffic impacts. In fact, um, payment was made um, to identify those easement areas. That was sort of the payment for traffic mitigation to connect other neighborhoods to help reduce the tra traffic um, impacts created by the subdivision. So those connections were required to re related to traffic and the, particularly the fact that there was no through street connection. But the um, because of the number of waivers, the applicant ultimately came back to the planning board and said, okay, look, I'll just make this a private way. Um, and so that was the um, applicant's pr presentation to the planning board for obtaining approval. So then the planning boards noted that, okay, we'll waive these subdivision rules because you've said this is going to be a private way. You'll set it up. That will be not the city's burden to take on, you know, these um, issues, particularly as it relates to water. And originally there were supposed to be um, wells and cisterns and individual pumps on many of the lots in the subdivision. So that was originally why the, um, the and how this became a public way and the planning board wanted to make it clear at the time so that the applic so that the end users, the buyers moving in would see that up front in multiple documents and not just have it buried somewhere. So it's in the decision, it's in the covenants, it's in the maintenance requirements. Um, and then along the way, as you heard, this um, developer just turned over the subdivision to um, the HOA last year. It's taken this long to build out for various reasons. Um, and along the way, there have been a few amendments, one of which was to provide a whole subdivision booster um, station um, so that individual lots didn't have to have the wells and the pumps and the cisterns for fire suppression and so forth. So um, there's a really, there's a, I mean, that's a big piece of the infrastructure that requires maintenance um, that the Department of Public Works, as you, um, as is noted in the staff memo from DPW, is not in a position to be able to take over. And those are in the, the water lines are in the street. So you can't really separate the street from the underground infrastructure. Um, so that, I just wanted to clarify that. And um, also I mentioned in my staff memo that in terms of traffic calming, you know, there's a long process, even if you are a public street, there's no guarantee that you're going to get um, any physical changes to your street or improvements. Um, it takes, there's a lot of study that's done. There may not be a speeding problem, even though there's a perceived um, issue with speeding. It is a closed system. So there are lots of the same people are coming in and out of the neighborhood. Um, it's not the same issues you'd have on a through street where you've got connectors crossing and lots of people, you know, coming through or passing through the neighborhood. 
So I just say that because there's not um, the the neighborhoods in a much better position now to make physical changes when they want and how they want, um, as opposed to if it were a public street. Um, there are also, there's no regulatory speed limit for the street. So there wouldn't be an enforcement of a um, regulation. It probably defaults to 30 miles per hour is my guess, because it would fall under the statutory um, standard speed limit where there's no posting. Um, so that's a little bit on the traffic um, piece. Do we have any information on the laws in Massachusetts about HOA's legal ability to enforce traffic laws? I mean, can they levy fines on people for with a radar or something? Is that legal? I don't know, but I don't know what the speed limit is. <laughs> I mean, you can post a speed limit, but I don't know if that's, you know, speed limits are supposed to be based on um, a formula that de is determined by, you know, the number, sure. of the type of street. So technically so. there's no such thing as speeding on a, on a, what's technically like a driveway with no speed limit, basically, right. by, the, by the law. Right. Sure. Okay. But the HOA could make a limit that they enforce, presumably. Yeah. Wow. Speed limits. Um, first of all, I would say that speed signs. 80 miles an hour through yeah. the parking garage at the Holyoke Mall, like somebody will say something to me. That's a private thing, right? Yeah. If you're in Dean, I'm guessing that place would be Dean. Yeah. Sure, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, also, nowhere in the city do speed limits um, reduce speed. Oh, sure. Yeah. So it really has to be physically, and it's sure you could put in speed traps and put people on notice for a while, but the reality is it's the the physical layout of the street is what's gonna slow people down. So even if there is a posted speed limit, it might feel too fast for, for residents. And so the only way to address that is you can't enforce the speed limit because people aren't speeding um, according to you know standards, but if you narrowed or made you know, diversions, then it would force people to slow down. And that's really how you get people to slow down, not by posting speed limits and doing enforcement, you know, random once in a while enforcement. Yeah, why don't, why, sorry, I don't know who's, who to ask, can we ask questions or are we not doing that now or what are we doing? We haven't opened it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if you'd like to, Talk to the. Are there other presentations? Or... Well, I have a question for Carolyn. Can... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, God. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm just, I need to pull it up. Zoom is really, um, it keeps going out and coming back in. So that's what's giving me pause here for a second. I just want to make sure this is still on. Okay. Um, so, so the issue is that the water lines are all in the street. Um, and the utilities, so, the, so, um, I'll, I'll pull up, I can, um, pull up, um, DPW's response, but, um, 
essentially, you know, if the city were to take over the street and something happened with the water lines that the sub that the HOA is responsible for, they're going to go in and be respond and they'll have to make immediate repairs to the water line, dig up the street, do whatever, and then the street is left open, and then it's just, and then so you'd have to write in. It would be a complicated set of standards to say that someone is, um, you know, one entity is responsible for things underneath and the other entity is responsible for everything on top. Um, so um, Department of Public Works is, um, um, I'm sorry, I pulled up the wrong, um, here we go, um, is concerned that, um, there would be a significant impact to maintenance of the utilities um, and um, the water system because they those things are intimately tied to the street layout. Um, and so I, um, I think that's their primary um, concern, but they've also identified multiple other conditions that would have to be addressed before this that relate to the utilities and whose responsibilities are, are what. Um, so it's not just about this condition, about letting this um, city pursue public um, street acceptance. Thank you. Other comments or questions from the board at this point? Might I respond to? Sure. Um, again, Randy Protoski. Um, yeah, I went through um, the city engineer's comments and he, he's correct. I mean, um, look, and I'd like to correct um, something that Ellen said. Um, first of all, what we want to do is, is approach the city and say, are there viable options to separate this. It could be, I would love for the city to take everything. They're far more capable and competent than we are. Um, the same arguments don't apply to the boost to pump system that, that apply to the street. I mean, we can maintain that. It's not something that you see all over the city. Leeds is the only community, although much bigger than our city operated boost to pump system. But are there options for us to separate things out? Um, you know, step one, would they consider taking everything? Two, would they consider um, taking the street and everything underground like they typically do. And um, we'll take the booster pump and we'll write up the appropriate agreements and of course pay for, for the writing of that. Um, and the last one is, is potentially um, just like the city has private companies crossing and going under the roadways, typically electrical companies and other utilities, is there a possibility for an easement? We'd write an easement agreement where if, if we dug a hole in the ground, We'd have to fill it up, repave the road. Um, we'd be highly incented to do that. Um, and in the existing agreements, the city already has the ability to impose liens on our homes um, for a variety of things that we don't if we don't maintain the property properly. I think that was it. Um, yeah, and, and then the other one is is the likelihood of a, a water main failure, given that everything was built to city standards and is. Yeah. 12 years old um, is far less likely than some of the much older infrastructure that we have here in the city. Yeah. So unless there are further questions from the board at this point, we're going to open it up to public comment. A um, couple of procedural things about that before we get started. One is that we received the many letters from um, people in the neighborhood. Um, those are part of the public record. We have read and reviewed them carefully. So you do not need to read your letters in this evening to have them be part of the record. They are part of the record. Um, we also have heard very clearly the concerns about both in the letters and in the presentation about um, safety, about fairness in terms of your taxes and fairness in terms of the connectivity of Emerson Way to area neighborhoods. So um, you do not need to repeat those comments tonight as we, we are familiar with them and, and those concerns of yours. So we would ask, um, there are many of you here tonight, we're happy to hear from you, but please keep your comments brief um, and also focus on things that we have not yet heard. It doesn't um, strengthen the argument to hear the same thing multiple times over. Um, Mm 
when, and then we'll be happy to hear your comments. I will also just note that we will often sort of hear everybody's comments. And then if there are pieces we want to address, take back up with the applicants, with Carolyn, among each other, we'll do that at the end. Um, so we'll be making note of themes. Uh, when I made an appointment about two years ago with Carolyn Amish when she was an assistant director in planning at that time, on the process of making Emerson Way a city street, I was accompanied by resident Randy Krakowski and Patrick Mahoney. Carolyn had the deed and presented a section that stated in Article 2. Number two, private subdivision road. At no time shall the grannies of any lot or the heirs, successors, and assigns petition the city of Northampton to accept Emerson Way as a public way. This is an irrevocable condition of subdivision approval. I was very concerned as a city councilor with that language on this deed. I have never seen this before on any street in Ward 6 as a city councilor. I want to give some examples of the streets that I have helped several, several residents in Ward 6, going from a private street to a city street. Autumn Drive, Woods Road, Cardinal Way, Whittier, Woodland, Lady Slipper Lane, Bearberry Lane, Maple Ridge, Ava Circle. I can give you a list. I'm here to represent the residents here in Ward 6. I started as a city councilor working with Doug Cole when the two other women who owned it went bankruptcy. And Doug Cole was an excellent, excellent contractor. Excellent. I went above the buffer lines for going ahead and sending out letters to residents. We did almost all of Pertzbert Road, many, many meetings. Doug Cole made a tremendous amount of movement on that development, working with the residents of Northampton on Pertzbert Road. The abutters, very concerned, and even people on the outlines of the of the inner streets. It's very important to listen what people are saying. Critical, no matter what board you're on, city councilor, whatever. There's an outcry in this city of people not being heard. And it's serious. And I want you to hear what I'm saying as a city councilor tonight. Emerson Way is a beautiful, beautiful subdivision. And I know probably some of you in the planning board have taken a drive through Emerson Way. And nobody can't say it's not because it is. The residents are paying extremely high taxes. I pay taxes, you all pay taxes. You're looking at many children living in that subdivision and many residents. I have met several residents in Emerson Way, and they are caring, very, very caring about our city. I have some residents just interviewed, oh, several months ago, another resident to be on a board. And as a counselor, I'm so happy to see that attachment to our city of Northampton. I think you're hearing tonight people who are asking for something that is in due respect. And that is to go ahead. And I'm asking the planning board to please modify the original development permit by eliminating the old language that prohibits the residents of Emerson Way from petitioning the city to make Emerson Way a city street. This is the first time I have ever dealt with language like this and hearing 
our director, Carolyn Mish, explain why that was put on there. Well, it can be removed. The language definitely can be changed. I want to say that you need to really get to know the residents on Emerson Way. Being on the planning board, zoning, whatever. It's your job to go out there and look at those homes, look at the property. And you're going to see why I'm here this evening. To go ahead and say, make the decision to make what the people are asking, no matter what. I just feel as a city councilor that the homeowners of Emerson Way have kept up with their responsibilities of making Emerson Way a beautiful subdivision in this city. I definitely feel, which you're probably gonna be glad to hear this, but I wanna thank all the board members for your valuable time of volunteering for being on this board, which is a very hard board, a very, very hard board. I remember at one time we used to be here to 12 o'clock at night, 1230, with some really hard cases that came forth. So anyways, I want to say that I want to thank you from my heart because you have a very difficult job to do and have to make some serious decisions. So thank you. Others interested in making comments? Good evening and thank you to the board and to the director for giving us this time. My name is Veronica Darman and I'm at 196 Emerson Way. And I wanna talk about giving back. Um, I'm one of many people who live on the street who have lived in Northampton for many, many years. I raised my child here. I actually was also living on Ice Pond Drive when we petitioned the city to make us a public way. Um, I never knew that there was this stipulation in the covenants. And so I'm one of those people who never heard that. Um, so when my wife and I decided to build a home on Emerson Way, we didn't have the information that this was never going to be an option. And so this was a big shocker. <laughs> we just thought it would be an option when you know, everyone was able to build on their lot. Um, since I've lived here, I've had a business in town. I've um, worked with many boards. I'm on a few boards now. I've retired from Holyoke Community College and um, I'm happy to say that I'm a volunteer on many boards that are associated with the city as well as economic development. And although we've all shared our feelings about fairness um, and paying our taxes, I want to say that we're happy to be part of this city that we love and that we cherish and we're giving back. Um, my wife has also helped with Summer on Strong through Lowe's uh, where she's employed. And so we've been able to help them tremendously in the last few years uh, with in-kind services. So I'm asking the board members and the director tonight, um, as our city councilor has, to really consider what we all do as, as part of the city of Northampton and to ask you to consider to change this verbiage. Thank you. Hi, James Greenman, 176 Emerson Way. And I just wanted to point out some of the arguments and questions that were made by Carolyn and others were, were really more for the, would be for the next step. We're only asking to allow us to ask the, to ask the city to do this. You're not giving us permission to make it a city street. We're just asking you to allow us to let the city discuss it with us. And they may say no, there may be a lot of stipulations, but I just wanted to remind, because the arguments that were going back and forth were really the details of what we would have to do to become accepted, not just to remove the language to allow us to request it. So I just want to remind you that's 
That's all we're asking for today. Allow us to talk to the city. That's why I want to Hi, it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> um, my name is uh, Bev Bates. I live at 206 Emerson Way. I've lived there for going on three years now. Um, in my prior life, I worked in the arena of affordable housing development here and elsewhere. Um, and so I understand that developers often make commitments that somebody else is going to have to live up to. That's particularly true in the subdivision business. Um, and those commitments are made because you're trying to figure out how to make it all work. You need, you know, all sorts of variances in order to deliver what you think you're going to deliver. But the people who actually have to deliver long term are the people who buy the property. And I don't know how we as a community resolve that problem, but I think it's a it's a real issue and it ought to become an issue that is about how we think about granting this kind of um, permission, if you will, in the future. One of the things as I was um, listening to my neighbors that really struck me, there's a sign as you enter the community, there are many signs, but um, uh, speeding signs, et cetera, but that um, promises that this is a public way and that the bike trail is coming through. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. When's this going to happen? And nobody knows when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. But uh, as a used to be developer, albeit nonprofit, um, we're not a gated community. We're not a place that has a fence that says you don't get to come in here unless you live here. So put your code in the thing and drive on through. No, we welcome we welcome our neighbors. We welcome people who want to walk their pets. We welcome people who want to ride their bikes. We welcome people who want to see the beauty that is that community. And if you haven't been up there, it is beautiful. And so part of our ability to welcome others is to know that we have some construct, some framework to enforce some rules. And that's, I think, what we're asking for tonight. You know, all the details about the pump house and everything else, those issues, I believe, I can't speak for anyone but myself, are negotiable. But the idea that we want to be a great community and we want to be an enhancement to the neighborhood and the city as a whole, I think is what we're talking about. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Um, hi. Um, so really, thank you guys for being here. I brought some notes and very short. I'm Larry Perales. I live at 199 Emerson Way. I've only lived here for six years. Sorry, Veronica. Um, but, um, but anyway, it's a wonderful neighborhood. It really does have a lot of pedestrian traffic, a lot of kids, a lot of people around. I guess personally, I really would feel better if we had access to the police department services. Um, and I actually have a question for the board. Um, I, I know that our status as a private street really limits the police department, but does it also um, limit our access to the fire department, emergency services, and ambulances? I don't know the answer, and I hope not, but that's a little bit uncomfortable for me. So um, I hope you'll let us at least start the discussion, and um, really thank you for taking time to talk with us. Really appreciate it. Do you have an answer to that? Yeah, I mean, I can answer a couple of these things. It's not just, you know, there's, you know, every private condominium, every other private street in the city gets me emergency services serves and all of them. Um, there are other streets that um, are private and, you know, sort of discussed in the in their, um, in their memo. And there are streets with water issues that were originally uh, approved. Um, 
as if they were going to be private. There was, there was a subdivision out West Hampton Road, had very similar issues about water. The water line was being proposed as too deep. They were going to have sewage pump stations or septic pumps um, station and computer, communal septic. That subdivision was approved by the planning board if it would be a private way as well. That subdivision was never built, but it's just an example of, you know, subdivisions that do get approved occasionally. And the idea is you're look when the planning board is reviewing a subdivision, they're looking at it as a package. It's the package of infrastructure that the board is approving. So if there are elements of the subdivision that don't meet the standards, the board has to weigh whether it's appropriate to approve the subdivision or completely deny it. And so um, one mechanism is to offer that it all of that infrastructure be private, not that you pick apart one or the other, because you're looking at the entire package when you're permitting a subdivision. Um, so that, um, and as has been noted, those infra, those utilities by design are in the right of way, so they're not going cross country and through and across lots. So. Um, that's why I think it's incredibly difficult to sort of pick apart that because you're you would want to know does this subdivision meet the standards if we start peeling away um, some of these provisions and so Carolyn, are there any comments in the chat? Um, there was just a request to speak into the mic, but otherwise not on this um, hearing. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Alexander. I'm at 65 Emerson Way. I've been here since August. The point was made earlier, and it's really the only point that I think needs emphasizing tonight, because as I read it, and do correct me if I'm wrong, the purpose of this meeting is to create a scenario where the two sides can legally discuss these issues, because currently the city has no obligation to talk to the subdivision. Now, after those discussions commence, there may be absolutely no changes to the original language. But right now, even though I would assume most of us pay our taxes, um, <laughs> We can't even discuss the substance of these matters because of language that was put into a document that none of us were party to. I mean, that, that goes beyond taxation without representation. That's taxation without kibitzing, um, which must be improper. So all I'm really saying is if we don't move forward on anything, I think it's imperative that we move forward on this issue of discussing these conditions. That's it. Don't look away. Is there anybody else who would like to make public comment? I just want to ask a question oh, to yes. Carolyn. Um, are there any other subdivisions that have this type of prohibition to petition the city for? Yeah, I mean, the most of them are, so the one that, Kensington Way that I mentioned that actually didn't get built, but the other private streets. So um, there's um, the list of, um, you know, co the co-housing properties that have private streets that they need to maintain. Um, I would have to go back through and look to see if the, um, I think there are several that have that same language because it was, um, a an interest in making sure buyers understood that going in. Um, there are some older ones that didn't have that language. It just said that this was approved as a private street. But um, you know, I think there was a time where DPW, the Department of Public Works, and the Planning Board determined that it would be appropriate to make sure that this is how you ensure that that approval sort of stays in place over time and is clear to buyers going in. Would it be appropriate to, to share the results of the research that we did? 
Um, and so, and, and I'm not sure we found it. You approach the podium just for the recording. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Randy Kratowski, 171 Emerson Way. Um, I'll just share the results of what we found because um, we did a lot of research trying to figure out what, why were we different? Because Ridgeview, Ice Pond, Cardinal Way, um, Sovereign Way, you know, just all of the things that, that Councillor LaBarge mentioned um, were approved like 1990 to 2010 is kind of the, we were in the middle of that. And um, in that period, we are the only ones with this prohibition other than condominium complexes. Condominium complexes and co-housing, as, as um, Director Mish mentioned, um, routinely have either 30 year, what we found a 30 year or a permanent prohibition against petitioning the city. Um, I don't know why we didn't, we didn't further research that. We were the only residential subdivision with this prohibition. Since then we have found one, um, and some of you might've been involved with it. It's Higgins Way down at the bottom of, uh, of That's what the universe thinks of my comments. Um, you know, so I've been building for 35 years. Um, projects are all unique. Subdivisions are very unique. They have a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of things that need to be uh, adhered to. And every project is different. Every project is different. So your project was different than all the other projects that were built. And at the time, from what I've been able to read, um, there were so many outstanding conditions that it was either accept this uh, covenants as a private way or deny the project. So the planning board obviously felt strong enough about it to write it. Uh, there's like 10 different covenances in there and this language is written in a bunch of different places because exactly this, they didn't want all you guys to not know about it when you were buying houses. And at the same time, they also didn't want this scenario 20 years later to come back with people had, that had nothing to do with these agreements and, and, and want to change it. And it doesn't meet the requirements that are required for subdivisions. And I'm not telling you anything you don't already know because you all said this. You want the opportunity to have the conversation. And I don't know, Carolyn, are we, by asking us to remove that language, that feels like a very slippery slope to me um, because we have a responsibility that, um, you know, things are built to codes and compliances and safety and and that we keep in mind the, the city's resources and obviously DPW has been involved in this and and the planning board 20 years ago, I mean, felt very strongly about this. So can these, can they not have the conversation with the city at all while that language is in there? Is, is I mean, is, do we really have to remove this language for them to have a conversation with the city or is this is just never going to happen up until 2040, which is written in there where they could potentially change things? I mean, I think the issue is that, you know, some of it's sort of the chicken and the egg, right? So maybe department maybe city departments don't want to have the conversation because the condition is in there it's an irrevocable covenant that's recorded throughout um but i think that's also protection for the city because the whole reason why they the um various departments reviewed this and said look as a package we can handle the you know, the waivers and the issues that the developer has chosen, the path the developer has chosen, because we know we're not going to have to um, maintain this and um, 
in the future. So if the developer really wants to go this route, then yes, we need to make sure it's, you know, the case. And so I think from that, just sort of, as you mentioned, the whole idea is that, you know, 10 years down the road, now it's 20 years down the road, that doesn't just easily get turned over. And I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I think you could have the conversation. I'm just not sure how willing the departments are to have the conversation, given that this was sort of the covenant with the city as well. You know, this is how it's going to be. Um, it seems to me that it sends a really strong message if the planning board attached this, what the applicants are saying was a very rare condition. I don't know, I'm one of four kids. And if someone said, my brother, Josh, don't let him touch the TV. There's like a reason for that, you know, because he's a history or there's some other underlying issue that was specific. So they added a rare condition to this because of these infrastructure things that were not being met. And if the planning board today says, don't worry about that stuff. That's a pretty strong message that we think it's all fine now. And I don't yeah. think we know that it's all fine. seems like if you were going to reapply for a subdivision, I mean, we can go through the eight waivers or whatever that would have existed or something, right. but it yeah. seems like unless there's like, no, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> unless there's a cost to doing those things that would make it a position where the city could maintain it in a reasonable way, which it doesn't sound like the HOA wants to do those things. I wouldn't either. I get it. But the city also doesn't want to because we have lots of streets. And I mean, I live on a city street. It's not maintained anywhere near as nice as, I mean, your street looks beautiful. Cops are not on my street stopping speeders. I mean, come on. I mean, like every street in the city that has houses on it wants people to drive slower. A lot of them have speed bumps. I would advise you have the power to add a speed bump. A lot of cities, streets, people want speed bumps and can't get them. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that solving, putting, making a city street necessarily solves all of your um, concerns. I mean, we hear a lot of these concerns from people who are on city streets, let's just say that. I think it also relates to what that means for all the other private streets and private driveways and whether or not those permits are then up for discussion. I mean, why wouldn't they be if, you know, the board and the city approves certain things because things are going to be private, then um, why not reopen that for any of the ones, you I know, that don't meet sense. like we're not asking to have the conversation about the content. We just want to have the conversation with the city. I think that's totally disingenuous. I think if, I would be much more swayed saying I want to remove this restriction and here's the eight waivers that would have been happened and here's why one by one they don't apply or we fix them or something but i don't hear anything i hear like everyone's i agree like everyone's very nice i love like the residents of northampton and i want everyone's children to be safe and everything i just don't see like anything about the content of the actual subdivision that's what we need and that's the only thing we really, really can really judge can i agree with you responding yeah so so there, there uh, brandy Kratowski, 171 emerson way again um, there is eight waivers. Um, seven of those waivers are commonly found in just about every subdivision approval um, that there is. So the length of this cul-de-sac is from 850 feet, to, the width from 28 feet to 22 feet, Lake Cardinal Way, Lake Sovereign Way, Lake Ridgeview, Lake Ice Pond. Um, and this is what we did is we looked at why are we different? Um, no connection to a dead end street. There's a lot of those in the city, even though the city doesn't really like them. Um, a lot of the developments come in off of major roads that don't reconnect through. Um, you know, even it. You could say Village Hill is kind of like that, although they kind of cheated by connecting back a few hundred feet from the original connection in. Um, there's a, one of the curves had a hundred foot tangent. It, it was um, a little tighter than it had to be because there was a wetlands that they did not want to infringe on. Um, there's the waiver of a 60 foot right away. So this is one of the eight um, from the center line due to uh, um, an existing parcel. It's 59.75 feet. So it's four inches, or three inches narrower than it. Then um, there's a waiver from a required four to one slope because of, of steepness in one part. And then, the, then there's the waiver uh, related to the uh, water system. And at the time that this was approved, um, there was no pump house proposed. At that point in time, city water was going to go to the uh, lower um, houses and the upper houses would be on wells. You know, so I, I viewed it as sort of the combination of Sovereign Way, which was private, got taken, and Ridgeview, um, which was uh, private and got taken. At the time of the approval, since then, um, 
the, the pump house was added in, in 2016, I think so. We, like I said, we weren't sure how to present the argument, so we didn't go through this, but our subdivision is so close to so many other subdivisions that are approved in that 20 year time frame, And uh, we know also that, you know, from Pat Doggins that uh, the developer was under intense financial pressure, would agree to anything. Um, so it might've been proposed and, and gotten in there. So like, like I say, we don't, we didn't, we weren't there. Um, but those are the things, like I say, we're, we're identical on seven and these eight. The eighth one is one that uh, absolutely needs to be talking about. And like I say, whether it's an easement, whether it's a, there, there's a variety of options there that we've investigated. But as Director Mish said, the city's not too interested in talking with us because they just point to the what's said there. Thank you. I would. Hi, Veronica Darman, 196 Emerson Way. I just like to respond to something that you said. What's the difference between your street and my street? And um, in fairness, I have to say, we both pay taxes and I pay thousands of dollars more because I have to worry about snow removal and all of the private services that you enjoy as a Northampton resident. And that's the difference for me and my family. So I just wanted to respond to that. Okay. You know, subdivisions are less common up here than they are down in the South, um, down in the South that's, or out in the West, they're, they're not as common up here, but subdivisions and homeowners associations are, full of cans and can'ts and, you know, um, restrictions and accommodations for that project. And when you buy into a subdivision, it comes with a homeowners association fee, which is going to be paying for all those things that, that we perhaps, you know, the city's taking care of for us if we're not in a subdivision. Um, and I get it, you guys didn't know about this, but you know, buying into a subdivision, knowing about the homeowners association, it is a choice. Um, I would love to see everybody, you know, paying less taxes and, but it's, you know, if we were sitting in Florida and, and there we might be, you might be looking at 200 subdivisions and, and they would be, you know, 150 of them might be just like yours, just depending on, the project, the timing of the project, the size of the project, the specifics of the project, um, you know, so uh, uh, it's a different animal, certainly living in a subdivision area. Michael Miller. Um... 221 or 227, sorry, <laughs> wrong place, uh, Emerson Way. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused here. There's a little bit of what I think of as kind of bait and switch or disingenuousness. First of all, we were told as a group that we have to go through the two-step process, whether we come through and have the two steps on top of each other, which is what you're asking, basically, or whether it happens first, we ask for the permission to do this and then go the next step of trying to figure out what we would do and how we would negotiate. Those are, those are two different things, but the advice that we got was to do it as two clean separate steps. So to be condemned or to be criticized because we are being honest and straightforward seems disingenuous on basically the information that we we uh, gleaned. Second thing is, let's go back to the history. The history, um, as we, I understand it, and what we were told is that this was originally a condominium project that was set up. And the reason for putting in this specification of not being able to make any um, changes to the, uh, the public way concept was because of it being a condominium. There was a change after that, yet the city didn't even step forward and make a good faith statement and say, okay, 
it's now going to be a residence of just 55 units instead of having multiple, multiple units, and didn't follow through with that in the way of all the other um, places that were suggested or, or listed and described, Cardinal Way, so on and so forth. There's a little bit of disingenuousness on the part of the planning board 20 years ago. That doesn't seem fair. The planning board failed the system. We are having to now try and undo that problem so that there can be a conversation. The fact that there are no police on your street is a sad state. The fact that there can't be any police on ours is a very sad state. There can be. Not to, not to um, administer any rules having to do with um, speeding and, and so on and so forth. Emergencies, fine. Sir, yes. Are police in the queue go on your street? They do not. That's not true. If there is a domestic disturbance, the police. Can I'm not talking about safety. that. We're talking about safety. We're talking about. Um, I, and I'm talking about safety. The police do come to your street. Right. Yes, I understand that. So, Please don't say they're not not coming to your street. Are they coming and enforcing any kind of speed limits? Not, Answer not, that not question. Speed. Answer that question, please. Are they or are they not? I'm guessing if someone was going way too fast through your street, they probably come because that's endangering a life. You're guessing they don't. They can't. It is a private way. They I, are not. My point is what you're saying is not correct. Police do come, firemen do come. They do. You have other protections that we don't have, like putting up, like I know, for example, on Nonotuck Street, they wanted to put up a bunch of speed bumps. They couldn't do it because the city didn't allow it. You guys can do it. There's trade offs in life. And it has nothing to do with fairness or taxes or any of those things. You get the benefits for your street where you can put up certain things and they don't. Should is that not fair to them? It's it's not an issue of fairness. Uh, okay. Maybe I could just bring it back to um, just kind of wrap things up as far as where we are. So we did agree that these this condition was put in back when this was originally a condo project, when there were different set of facts, when there was issues with water lines that we think that, you know, they have changed certainly over the years and and by amendment. So there are amendments to special permits that we make or to the subdivision decisions. There are amendments that are made constantly. And so that's what we're again asking for another amendment that there have been previous amendments to this decision. And that because the waivers that were asked originally, some of them are still you know, relevant, but not all of them. And I think we, you know, eliminated the one that was the most, was the uh, most significant concern that generated this um, condition to begin with. So, you know, given that uh, situation where the one that was the most of the biggest concern, the water lines, that that has been addressed and is no longer the waiver that was originally requested, you know, if we could just consider that, you know, giving, having that not be the case, you know, the reason for the, the justification for that condition, having removed that, that we're asking for an amendment similar to other amendments that have been made to the subdivision decision. And again, just to, to wrap things up, that's that's where we are. That's what we're asking for. And um, uh, again, just to have the, be able to have the conversation and, uh, and see what we can work out with the city. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn, I mean, and fellow board members, it, part of what feels confusing to me about this is that I think for me, a lot of the decisions that we make as a board are based on clear standards. Does a project meet or not meet the standards as they are laid out? If it doesn't meet the standards, do we have a mechanism around that? Can Are there trade-offs, uh, affordable housing, tree removal, pavement in lieu of traffic mitigation, and so forth. And I'm not sure I understand in this context what any standards would be that would lead us to approve or not approve this. And all we really have are the guidance 
the standards that led to the amendment to begin with. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure on what basis to make a decision, um, which leads me to feel like the original decisions should stand because I can't, based on the parameters of the subdivision that we have, not, and I, you're all lovely people, but we can't make a decision based on the lovely people living in a particular neighborhood. That's not how we operate nor how we should operate. So I'm not sure what other um, guidance we have. Yeah. Um, so subdivision is um, in some ways is similar to your special permit and site plan reviews, but in some ways it's very, um, a little bit more regimented. And that is there is a subdivision rule book and if an applicant comes in and shows that a subdivision is meeting every single aspect in that, you know, 75 page document um, with no variation at all, the planning board is obligated. So similarly to site plan, the planning board is obligated to approve that subdivision. There is no obligation whatsoever to approve any subdivision. If there's one tiny um, element that's not met in all of those pages. Um, so many times, and yes, there are waivers that, um, that the board has granted, will likely grant in the future if there ever is another subdivision. Um, and there are uh, mitigation components that the planning board could consider in order to grant those waivers. Um, but the board, again, is not obligated to grant any waivers. They can just deny subdivision approval. Um, and in this scenario, uh, there were too many and significant ones to um, really balance that and say the board could find a way to approve it, except the fact that the applicant offered that it would be a private way and then the city wouldn't have to worry about the principally the water issues, but um, other issues as well. And they could say, well, you know what? Maybe those other ones go away because it's going to be a private way anyway. Um, <clears throat> so yes, there was an amendment to address some of the water issues, but it didn't eliminate the the consideration. It almost, um, it created another layer of, you know, um, uh, sort of whole system maintenance instead of individual um, property owners to maintain uh, their water, what, you know, individual wells, individual pump stations. It sort of just um, made it more communal. So I think um, <clears throat> if that answers your question a little bit, the, the you know, I think it is um, more than just saying, well, 23 years later, there have been some adjustments and now we think it's okay to just separate some of this out and maybe modify some of these conditions without looking at the whole context. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay, um, motion's been made and seconded to close the public comment. Uh, all those in favor? Um, and then just to clarify, so um, we have, um, I guess Stacy is the only associate member, but associate members can't vote on separately. So the voting members would be um, Melissa, Diana, and And it's simple majority. I mean, I my personal feeling is that I don't understand why we would change this. I mean, there's lots of things that are, you know, this town is riddled with with things that, uh, you know, properties that are different this way than that, and you know, we don't change them. Um, and these are the as you you know there's benefit there are there are some serious benefits as you know putting up a speed bump if you wanted to um and um, uh, uh, 
you know, I live on, I live over on North Street and I would love the police to be there more and I'll tell you they are, they're not. Um, and, uh, and um, I, I just don't see why we would change it. Uh, uh, Jana, I feel kind of like um, I'm in the a similar boat with you. I mean, uh, we bear the weight of responsibility of, of approving these projects as they come before us. And we usually have buckets of information and piles of documents that we pour over and we look at every detail and we have engineers up here telling us how they've met every little, you know, every last thing. And, um, you know, this subdivision was approved the way it was because it didn't meet a number of um, things that it was supposed to meet. And, and unless personally I had documentation in front of me or something saying that all of those have been met now, or, uh, you know, it just seems like it would be a much more of a presentation and, and a lot of information backing it up by registered professionals for me to feel comfortable in saying that, you know, we can change those rules because if we do that then we've kind of got this project out there that's doesn't did, didn't didn't meet all of the things in the subdivision rule book that we've now changed the rules on and and i do feel that that is a slippery slope to put our you know position to put ourselves in with respect to all of the projects that we approve or don't approve in the city it, it feels nebulous, very nebulous to me, even though I very much sympathize with the folks here and what they're saying in their beautiful community. I was I was taken by the DPW comment letter um, and something that was said in there was, I guess when the amendment in 2014, was it when the water pump station was added they were saying that uh, they kind of approved that amendment or they kind of endorsed that amendment because um, this covenant was still included. Um, you know, and I haven't been a part of any of these decisions in 2003 or 2014 or, or um, any of those. So I don't really know the, the logic behind them, but the language is very strong and I mean, an irrevocable condition. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that other than, you know, follow the condition that our, our four members uh, imposed. I mean, it seems pretty clear from the city councilor's history that there's a history of taking private streets and making them public. So it seems the rationale for adding a line saying, don't do that is pretty obvious because it happens all the time. And it's a huge incentive to do it. I get it. I would love it too. I would love for someone to pay to, you know, plow my driveway too. It's just, that would be great. I love it. But the fact is it happens all the time. We're in a context where the city is under enormous pressure to maintain the infrastructure that we have. We have Coca-Cola leaving. City cannot afford to deal with water, generally speaking. And if there were deals that were made, uh, by people who aren't here anymore, but that is, you know, that's what's written into the contracts. I don't see the city like if this was come, if this came before the city today as a subdivision, you know, that, you know, we would have to, it would be a huge mountain to climb to say, does the city want to take on this amount of infrastructure for this many houses? Uh, you know, so that's a whole other thing, you know, and, we, and there's impossible to, to say, but I think. It just seems pretty clear what the people who approved this meant to do. They meant to say, don't ever make this a city street. So for us to say, eh, it's okay, go ahead, seems totally like, other than like it feels good in the room, but the 29,000 other people who are going to pay the bills for this are not in the room here. You know? So I, I don't know. I'm sorry. It just sounds, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I, I just wonder why in 2014, when the project, switched from being um i mean is that when it was no longer a condo thing and it became a, a single family subdivision 
um, and, and let me just, um, I'm going to interject something because there, there was a chat comment that came in right before you made the motion to close. Mm -hmm. So I want to honor that before I answer this question that um, uh, Jacqueline McCreener um, uh, wanted to note that um, support for the residents in keeping the dialogue open between the planning board and residents. So that comment, and that did come in before the vote. So that's the only reason why I'm mentioning that there. Um, so no, early on, there was a discussion of condominium, but there were multiple, um, but, but it, there was still a street. So a subdivision is about creating a street. It's not about whether it's a condominium or not a condominium. So that's kind that doesn't really um, play into a board's decision. So you could have common land off of that new street that you're creating, or you could have multiple different, you could have, um, you know, lots that are for single family homes. You could have lots that are for multi unit homes. Um, it just, um, you just show the layout. So the um, that changed a few years, like say 20, 2005, 2006, where the lots were laid out, um, were modified and laid out differently. But um, the idea would be really that it's the an HOA that would maintain the street. It was always shown as a loop street. So it, um, the condominium is just the form of ownership versus the laying out of the street Thanks. yeah and there would be nothing stopping them from creating a condominium out of what's there now right i don't know i mean that's it's sort of separate probably like you could own yeah. houses in condominium or something it's just an it's just an ownership right type. Right. Okay. And, you know, there were well, some of those amendments just to sort of because the comment came up about there used to be many, you know, homes and now they're single family. One of the one of the amendments was just recently where there were two family units um, that were to be affordable, de designated as affordable housing scattered throughout. Mm -hmm. That's what changed most recently so that there's I think there's only one set, or maybe there's two sets of two of duplexes, and then the rest are all single family detached. So that was an amendment that happened in lieu of sort of shifting that across the street. It's been asked, then that might have been on the board. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Okay. What is the, how do you, I and move to the current language of uh, the uh, subdivision that uh, to Emerson Way the same. So move to deny the amendment. Yes. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, a vote, uh, motion's been made to deny the amendment. Um, all those in favor? Thank you all. Yes. Some ANRs. Yes. We have two ANRs. Okay. Oops. Um, the first one is. Let me make sure which one this one is. Okay. So both of these are actually for um conservation parcels so they're just um divisions that this is off of west hampton road i think it's right or ryan road sorry um ryan road so it's hard it's sort of you see this little triangle in space mm -hmm. <laughs> this parcel this this triangle is not on a street it's um 
part of a conservation, it's a, a Batsa conservation area, and this parcel is in, I think, chapter 61, but the property owner is just offering to donate this triangle to the city to add to the building space. So they had to create this lot. Um, it's not going to be a building lot, of course. It's just going to be. So the triangle doesn't exist yet. Right. It's They're part of this piece. And donating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it will be contiguous with that yes. conservation. Yeah. 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 Back no, there's no such thing. <laughs> you don't pay it unless you're building on it, developing it. <laughs> I moved to to approve the in our uh, this weird triangle. <laughs> this weird triangle. Wait a second. Second. It's a triangle, so I think you need a third also. Uh, Wait, who is that? The second. Uh, David. Okay. All all in favor of approving the weird weird triangle? Unanimous. Okay. The other one is um, on Old Wilson Road. It's um, part of a parcel that has already had um, house lots created from it. And then this is sort of the very wet rest of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so the uh, Pine Grove um, Conservation Area is across the street. And um, Okay. It's this lot is about um, 2.9 acres. Um, and so Route 66 is here, Florence Road is that way, and Pine Grove is over here. And so this is, there have been a couple of house lots built over on this, um, in this location. But um, so the, um, the, um, owner is wanting to convey. I'm sorry, I got them. I got them mixed up. So um, they're merging. They're sort of trying to create a bigger space here. This is one lot. They're carving off this 3.25 acres. Sorry, and that will be contiguous with city property as well on the north side of Old Wilson Road. And this, the applicants conveying because um, there's a tiny little upland area where a potential house could. Come. So the tape over here is going yeah. to this. That wind up being like a negative tax thing. Do we even try to move money and stuff like that? Because if you get built on it, I'm not sure it's a valuable one. Well, it's not buildable. So yeah. that portion of the property has a different assessment anyway. I mean, um, but we also, there's a lot of data that show, you know, properties that are abutting open space, the values are higher. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's that component too, but I'm not the assessor wizard. I'm just. <laughs> I moved to approve the uh, uh, based on what is it? Old Wilson Road. Old Wilson Road. Second. All in favor? Yep. Yeah. Can I move to approve the minutes of April 13th? Yes. They were beautiful. Yeah. Oh, second. <laughs> second. Did read the minutes? Yep. Second. Really? Second? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Anything else, Carolyn? No. Um, and the only other thing is that there is, there are, sorry, um, there's no meeting in the end of May. Really? So, There's no meeting the end of May. No. It's on David's calendar. That's great. It must do be it. real. Do it. What did you have in mind? I was gonna. I was gonna say I can't be there. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's why I thought of it. I'm, I need to be in Boston that day. So great. is that because it's? I definitely won't be here before the the holiday. Well, no, we don't ha like actually have any way. permits. So oh. instead of. Um, like generating a bunch of landscape. Okay, <laughs> cool. June eighth. It's at the house at Blues. That's pretty so May twenty five. Boom, That's gone. Right. June eighth. Got it. Very nice. They're really yeah. nice people. We're on there. Okay. I move to close the meeting. Oh right, we have to do that. Second. All in favor? Yes. 